Hey guys, welcome to episode number 19 of Latino Vegano, and I'm your host, Roger. For today, I have a special guest, a friend of mine from a long time, Vanessa Espinosa. And Vanessa, she's a vegan trainer. She's a nutrition coach. She's a Chihuahua rescue. She does online at-home training. She's an elite athlete in three sports, basketball, boxing, and powerlifting. She's an entrepreneur, and she's been vegan for a long time. We had a conversation about different topics, including pro athletes, why people are not embracing veganism, and many more. So without further ado, I'm going to leave you guys with Vanessa Espinosa. Let's go. Latinoyvegano.com So, you know, um, I, I, was, uh, I was on your website, and uh, I, I, there, was a, there was a part of your website, a part of your bio, and I read because it says, why vegan? I want you to, to elaborate, to tell folks a little bit more about, you know, about you. You know, uh, you can tell us a little bit about your story. And then now I'll, I'll charm in with a, with a question that I had related to your bio. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, why I'm vegan. Yeah. Uh, vegan for the animals. Right. You know, very simple. Um, and it's something that I just kind of stumbled upon myself. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, we rescued everything, dogs, cats, horses. And basically one day just clicked for me. I'm like, gosh, I'm eating a steak for dinner, but I love my pecs so much. And I'm rescuing all these animals. It just didn't, it didn't make sense. So um, I, I just, something I researched basically. And one day was like, no more, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, learning about factory farming and all the suffering the animals go through it just was like this is not this is not who i am right 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 so how long you been vegan Minister? i mean when did you get i've been vegan 20 years. 20 years 20 years yeah that's amazing that's amazing 20 years people always think that vegan is just a trend and then and, and you're gonna fall off the train at some point right how oh, everybody did right when i <laughs> when i started i was an athlete and people were like oh whatever you know yeah. this is just a phase she's going through and you right. know i got criticized and you're never going to be you know you're never going to be muscular you're never going to be a elite athlete you know going that route and it was just the complete opposite yeah. you know i'm a you know three sport athlete and have just excelled and it has helped everything Right. from my recovery to feeling better um looking better your skin your hair your nails like everything in health got better for me including including my um athletic background and i, I that's what i wanted you yeah. know it was when i went vegan for the animals yes but then i realized oh my gosh it's so much better for my health right. you know i'm feeling better and i wanted that edge over other athletes like what can I do to be better than my competition? And sure enough, this was it. You, it hey, that's crazy because it, you, you figured that out 20 years ago. Yeah. And now a lot of athletes, especially with the game changer, are figuring that out, that they could have an edge is they, is they go vegan or at least they eat plant-based. Yeah, so and it's, it's amazing <laughs> how many athletes are going vegan right now. Yeah. You know, because they're like, yeah. oh, my gosh, this yeah. is amazing. I feel better. I'm recovering better. Right. You know, and I, I'm so excited to see it. And I wish it would have happened a long time ago, but right. it is getting better every single day. You know, doing stuff like this, educating people, yeah. you know, it's all over social media and it, it's, it's coming. You know, it definitely yeah. is the future. Absolutely. Yeah, I was talking to Robert about this, like about how, um, how a lot of NBA players are plan based now and which is probably something that and then you know you and I follow NBA like crazy and uh, uh which is being hard now that the NBA is not on. Yeah I know it sucks, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> but um yeah so it is it's, it's a lot of players are plan based and they open about it. Like yeah Bill McGee talks about it a lot. Even um DeAndre Jordan talks talks about it a lot. So which which to me was it was a foreign concept for a lot of players back then, but now it seems to be like starting to be the norm to, to some extent, yeah. or at least it getting to that point. I know. Yeah. I think I think so. I just wish they would even be more vocal about it. True. You know, I mean, true, I know true. Chris Paul has said, you know, I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to give my com you know competitors the edge. <laughs> like, oh dang, that's Dude. crazy. Come on, man. I get that. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know these kids look up to these people you know right. they're they're gods to you know kids that are playing sports and if they would be a little bit more outspoken about it yeah i'm telling you it would be it yeah. would be a huge you know huge change because think about it. look at michael jordan okay what did he he was mcdonald's and coke and all this stuff and every kid wanted to have a happy meal it, you know 
yeah. we could do the same thing right now in a, in a good way and helping yeah. people, helping people's health. You yeah, know, absolutely, absolutely. You can you can create a bigger impact in people's life, inside the court and outside the court by For promoting sure. because. I mean, like in, in veganism itself can benefit in so many ways. So imagine if you as a figure, as a follow, as a follower or as a influencer, this is a term that the kids are using this day now, yep. able to influence in a lot of kids' um, life in that way. So they become their own superhero in their own ways because it's like, wow, I'm doing this. I'm doing all this amazing thing. I'm saving animals, saving people's lives, exactly. saving the planet. You feel so empowered at that moment by just being able uh -huh. to accomplish those kind of things. So uh, yeah, I, I agree with you that I wish you like a lot of more players will be even more open about it, regardless of the, of the, uh, of they feel, because think about it. A lot of players, they mentor other younger NBA players. It, it, of course they sport, do. Right. So they teach in the in and out about the business, about the sport. So why you can even share some knowledge on that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah every kid wants to grow up and be Chris Paul you know <laughs> I mean right. it, it, and if I was a kid and I'm you know I because I looked up to Michael Jordan he was my everything if Michael Jordan didn't eat me and was telling me are you kidding me I would be like I'm done <laughs> you know what I mean I agree I agree like that's what I need to do to jump that high <laughs> <laughs> exactly do you I know every kid mind? went out and bought the Jordans right absolutely, it's the same thing absolutely. it's marketing Imagine, so you're even talking about Jordan, like look at the impact this dude is doing still to this day. This dude is like 50 plus years old. He's not even playing in the league anymore. And he's still selling. So imagine if he would have, if would have, you know, adopted a plant-based lifestyle back then and how many people he would have influenced. Because, I mean, we I had know. like John Sally. John Sally was one of the few NBA players like from that era that, you sure. know, but he was, I think it was late, I, I think if story was like late in his life, he was when he started adopting the plant-based lifestyle when it was actually already kind of like this um, early, early stay old retirement time of, 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 of when sure. he was not as, uh, when he was not on his prime and he, right. he, he talks about how beneficial it was for him. Um, and, um, but imagine if a lot of more players during that time would have incorporated that lifestyle, they would have played more than 10 years probably. Because yep. you know, you know the it's NBA life, lifespan, and we kind of said it off track, but you know the NBA li um, lifespan is about 10 years. A player have about 10 years to play in the NBA and be successful. Exactly. So, it would so, be a lot longer. Yeah, a lot longer, a lot longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Lisa, what's your, what's your background? Because, um, I mean, I'm interested in knowing, I'm sure a lot of people ask, because you know, Vanessa Espinosa, that sounds more Latino than anybody else. You sound more Latino than I do. So I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> are interested in knowing your background. Where are your parents from? No, my background in athletics or? In both. Give us in both, in like in ethnicity and also in, in athletics. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll start. My, my dad is, uh, I'm from Colorado, born and raised. I'm actually mm -hmm. third generation Coloradoan. Um, but I am Mexican. My dad was a little bit Native American, Apache, uh, Native American. Um, and then my mom is actually Yugoslavian. So really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I got a, I got a little bit of, little yeah, bit of everything. You all over the place, Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was awesome. Yeah. So that's my background. And, uh, like I said, uh, third generation Coloradoan, mm -hmm. um, born and raised here. I moved to Arizona for a couple of years and then moved back to Colorado. Just absolutely love it. Okay, so um, in my Colorado. sports background, I've played yeah. athletics my entire life. I started playing basketball when I was in kindergarten, yeah. started boxing when I was just in diapers. My dad was a professional athlete. So growing up, that's all I knew was sports. Yeah. You know, every family vacation was working out, you know, staying fit, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, I, I thank my mom and my dad for, you know, showing me that type of lifestyle, that healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I was a college uh, basketball player, played division one basketball at Colorado state university was mm -hmm. a high school, all American basketball mm -hmm. player. Um, gosh, I got drafted to play professional basketball, mm -hmm. but didn't, uh, didn't take the opportunity because my father had just passed away at the time. So my life kind of went in a different direction. Right. Um, and I started boxing, um, competitively and became a three time Colorado golden glove state champion. Right. And currently I am a professional power lifter. So you are okay. That's that man. That's yeah. a great that's a great resume, Vanessa. Hey, do, can we can we find your um, college highlight on YouTube? You know what? I don't know. You know? That's a really good question. You know, uh -huh. the, the crazy thing, there wasn't any social media or anything, like everything was on VHS. 
that wasn't even that freaking long ago. Got it, ages me, you know. <laughs> so I doubt it. Oh you know? man, I I don't even want to talk about mine because it's the same way. It's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to go. I, yeah, I don't think there is. I mean, if you Google me, it'll come up with current stuff like my Instagram yeah. and Facebook and stuff. But you know, probably a few like you know newspaper articles. But I don't think there's any videos. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Hey, You're so not that much older than me, so I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> and I'm probably older than you, so I don't want to hear no, that I'm, shit. No, I'm, 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 I'm 41. So what? How old are you? 37. Okay, there you go. So now <laughs> we're close. <laughs> there you go. Not so that so far off. <laughs> hey, Robert turned about 40, right? Yeah, something like he that. He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he April. turned 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I but know. yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so, so yeah, I'm older. I'm not older than a couple of vegans, but I'm only, I might not look that old, but I, yeah, I'm older than a lot of, a lot of them. I've been, I've been vegan for 18 years. So, oh. Um, 18? Oh, damn, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That I mean, is crazy. That is a yeah. long time, man. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And, yeah, and I started it, and I started it back, back in Panama, where I'm originally from. And yeah. She was crazy. Like, <laughs> I, know. Oh, I people, can't even imagine. Yeah, people don't even know what the word vegan was. Actually, the word vegan was not even a word back then, right? They used to call it like strict vegetarians. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you say vegan, uh, they're like, what? And and yeah, my story is kind of very similar to like a lot of a lot of y'all. I think uh, uh, that's that's the reason why uh, I've been able to do a, a great connection with you because our story is very similar as far as like. You know the reason why we went vegan and then we we went to fitness to sport and all that kind of good stuff. Right. So that's that's why I always you know why we had that bond. Did you actually remember this first time I met you? I do. Yeah, in uh, <laughs> Austin, Texas. You of got course it, I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. Remember, I, I I link you through social media. I'm like, hey, Vanessa. Yeah. Yada yada yada. You're like, yeah, sure. I'm gonna go to Austin to see you compete. I'm like, what? You gonna go see me? Compete? Yeah, I'm I like, know. Yeah, I was like, oh, this guy's too cool. Dope. Like, I totally felt the connection with that's you and. Dope. That's yeah. Cool. I'm like, man, I appreciate that. And then you're like, yeah, I'm gonna stay in this house with Robert and a bunch of other vegan. You're like, what? Like, you see, yeah, just. And I asked, I asked the guys like, hey, can I bring Vanessa? And be like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I know who she is. You're like, yeah, a Robert. So he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let her to come. So let's come. Yeah, and that was crazy because at the time, Robert and I lived about 20 minutes apart from each other. <laughs> in Colorado, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's crazy how the words go. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm so glad that everything happened. And you know, the y'all y'all friends you grew from there and, and, and you guys yeah. were able to do amazing things together. We will talk about more about the book and all the little projects that you guys have got going on. So yeah, that was that was great because I I, I feel like this is that like that, that bonding, that 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 camaraderie, that friendship definitely is is what kept you know kept this movement going. Um oh, we can for all sure. have different backgrounds in different ways, but at the same time we all unite by one thing and like we have one mission, right? And exactly and that's you know that's what i love about it is you know yeah. we're all in it to save animals to right. educate people you know to help others and you know there is some you know bad stuff that goes on and whatever right. it's like come on we're all on the same team here right. you know we're all promoting and doing different things like mine is through the fitness industry right. you know others is through business or you know yeah. whatever the case may be right. but we're all doing the same thing and exactly. it doesn't matter why people go vegan, whether it's for the animals, for the health, for the environment, for social justice. Right. We're all saving animals in the end, and that's and what's yeah. important. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you mentioned that uh, in the future, you would like to see more people embrace plant-based, right? So my question for you is, why do you feel people are not embracing um, veganism? And where's the disconnect? Why is there a disconnect there? It's a great question. I think it's just old school thinking. Okay. You, you know, um, how people grew up. You yeah. know, most people grow up in the typical standard American diet, which is meat and potatoes and fried food, and fast food, <laughs> you know, all of that. And it's that, you know, your entire life, you are just, you're pounded on, on TV, on, and on the internet, you know, meat is for, uh, you know, that's where you get your protein. Right. And, you know, you can't blame people because there's so much misinformation out there it's garbage that we, what we, you know, read and what we learn on TV. Right. So that's, I think that's why people are still stuck in their old ways. And it's really hard to change that generation. And I think it's really hard. Like the people that are in their fifties and older, yeah. that generation is not budging. So it's the youth that we really have to target 
you know, elementary, even younger, elementary school, middle school, high school, the college, those kids are open. They're willing to learn than more so than the elderly. You know, you, you brought up a good point because um, for me in particular, like I, I <laughs> and I asked you this question too, what, what kind of vegan were you when you initiated uh, 20 years ago? Because I was born the militant vegan that I want everyone to change and be vegan because I, I, I saw the light. So sure, I, this is sure. an amazing lifestyle and I didn't even know crap about nutrition. I was just like, dude, I can't, I, just because I had the passion to, and the compassion I want everybody else to practice the same thing I'm practicing because I'm saying, Hey, right. this is not right. Like, what is, what are y'all doing? So, so since I had the same feeling, I want everybody else to follow up, follow along. But it was a, it was a kind of like a disappointing because it was, I was getting more rejection from either family members or friends. I even sure. have people that stopped being fr- stopped being my friends because of the totally. whole vegan thing. So I was like, wow, this is, this is sad. So, well, I mean, I, of course, during that journey, you change your strategies, right? The way you approach people. And then, then I changed it to, okay, let me try doing fitness so I can show folks that, you know, I'm not going to die tomorrow for doing this. And that kind of helped me a lot more, open them up more eyes, you know, being big and strong. A lot of people are like, man, I can't even know you can accomplish that being vegan. So it kind of helps with the activism part of it. But at the same time, now I notice in like this 2020, even 2019, that um, targeting a younger crowd, that is, like I said, hungry for information. I mean, mm-hmm. how do this thing works? I mean, who are those who are those people that are gonna leave? It's, it's actually it's more of an effective crowd for me because, like I said, the older crowd is like they're saying you cannot show an old dog new an old old dog new tricks. It's kind of like a similar thing, right? Absolutely, so you, are, you, it you, is. Are, you already have this 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 folks doing things for so many years with so many traditions or so in the custom so many ways. They have right. to they has to pretty much die. Or something bad happens to them, for them can click and say, "Okay, well now I'm going to do this." Sure, and, and you know what? Sometimes that's not even that. I've right. seen it a million times before. Right. I have people that spend. I know people that spend a thousand dollars on on diabetic medication. Right. They don't freaking care. Right. You know, right. they rather right. they they rather eat their hamburger and hot dogs and fried food and that's spend a thousand dollars on medication. Exactly. You know, I've had people. I've known people that have strokes and heart attacks, but they're still, you know, and it's yeah. that older generation. Yeah. That's just not budging. Yeah. You know what I say? Oh, well, you know, that's, that's on you. You know, if you know the information, you know, if the doctor, you know, if the doctor tells you, Hey, Roger, you have got to go completely raw to get rid of your cancer. Do you think you're going to do it? <laughs> oh yeah. I will. If I, I will. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to do yeah. everything I can to save myself, but people don't care. Right. The taste of a burger or fried food or eating out is more important than being yeah. alive. And that's a sad case. Yeah, it, it, I feel like, especially like, um, so now I've seen this a lot in the Latin community, right? They so stuck in their culture, like, oh, oh, you know, for sure. They, so, so, so for me, for example, they'll say like, well, you know, we have our our rice and beans and and with chicken, and you know, we have our meat staple meals. I can't I can't get away from those meals. This is a delicious meal. A lot of greasy food. And then a lot of these food just don't even have no nutritional value, Vanessa, right? It's just, it's just food. And then it's addicted food. Either this is just got right. tons of sugar. And I'm not a health expert because I didn't go vegan for the health. And so I always have to clarify that. However, with training and bodybuilding and, and exercising, I learned, I had learned a little bit more about it. But my goal is going to be to eventually kind of help people in that, in that space. <clears throat> At the same time, I feel like, Culture wise is what uh, a lot of folks are being saying, kind of like what you're saying that, uh, oh, well, I don't want to change because, um, you know, my culture or whatever the case is. So right. and that's completely wrong because, I mean, like I say, if you're dying, you're not going to make those changes in your lives to save your life. So you'd rather die. So you'd rather die instead of changing your diet. And sometimes the changes yep. are minimal. It's like small little changes. Just take away the meat. I know. You, you can eat a mock meat and then you, you, you should be good, right? Yeah, it's crazy what, you know, and that's how addicted, addicted people are to food. Yeah. You know, they just can't give it up. It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah, Vanessa, so from a, from a health standpoint and from a um, fitness standpoint, how do, you, how do you balance those two out? How do health and fitness combine recreates or improve your life so 
Jen, give us your, your, your thoughts on that. Yeah. You know, health to me is everything. Okay. Um, I'm a big believer that everything that you put in your body matters. Mm -hmm. You know, your body's a fine tuned machine and you know, you're not going to put shitty gas in your car, right? Why would you put mm -hmm. shitty food in your body? So I, you know, I'm probably a little bit more strict than most people, but I, I really focus on whole food, um, whole foods, excuse me. Um, I meal prep everything mm -hmm. and you know, I, I like doing it cause I know what's in my food. You know, I know how much oil, actually I don't cook with oil, but you know how much salt, sugar, you know, what's going in your food when you eat right. out, even if it is vegan, it's still it's got, it's got more oil, more salt, more right. sugar. So I'm really particular on that. Um, do I eat out? Yeah. Once in a while, maybe once a month, but I really, I just feel better. The better I eat, the better I feel, the better I train, the better my recovery, everything. And I want to feel good. I mean, nothing tastes as good as being fit feels. True. And that's why I meal prep, you know, and some of my staples like for, I'll give you kind of a day, but my breakfast yeah. is quinoa typically with a banana on top, peanut butter, cinnamon, and I sprinkle some chia and hemp. So just real food, mm -hmm. you know, just simple stuff, you right. know, it's not expensive stuff. Um, and people think that being vegan is so expensive. Yeah. It's not. I mean, the, the cheapest foods are beans and rice and, you know, quinoa and all that stuff. Right. You know, the price of meat, I, I don't even know because I haven't bought meat in 20 years, but <laughs> I know it's expensive, you know, yeah. and that's the biggest thing people worry about. Oh, is it going to be expensive, you know, to go vegan or eat whole foods? I mean, it sure it can be, you know, there's a lot of, you know, fake meats and cheeses and stuff that can get really expensive, but right. I really try to stay away from stuff like that and just focus on fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grain, tofu, tempeh, very simple, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Actually, that was, that's a good segue for my next question because I was going to ask you, how can you eat on a budget? Because a lot of people, like you said, they complain that being vegan is expensive. Is that anything? Yeah. You have any tips for that? Yeah, you know, I mean, you can go to Costco or Sam's Club, mm -hmm. for example, and you could buy a big thing of quinoa for $10 and that'll feed you for, I mean, that feeds me for like six months. It's crazy. <laughs> thing of beans, you know. Uh, rice is cheap. They have noodles you know, quinoa noodles and millet noodles, um, big things of uh, uh, fruit and vegetables that are, that are cheap. Mm -hmm. If you stick to those type of foods, if you stick to real food, it is so much cheaper than, than buying a steak or chicken or whatever. Right. I mean, you just have to, you just have to know how to shop and keep it, keep it simple. But Nissa, do you eat to get full or do you have a portion of food that you, you condense? So it's like, okay, this, like you, yeah, uh, do you count macro question. or do you just eat to get full? How, how do you balance that out? Yeah. So I've never counted macros. Okay. I actually don't believe in counting macros. I think it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, I focus on nutrient dense food. Mm. So food that are going to give me the most energy, the foods that, ha that contain the most antioxidants, the most vitamins and minerals. That's what I focus on. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't worry about calories. I will measure out my food. So, cause you know, everybody overeats. So for example, my, my <laughs> breakfast, I'll measure out a cup, you know, and I'm good, you know, it's true. I'll yeah. eat the whole, you know, freaking bowl. But yeah, I do measure out food. Um, yeah. Like for dinner and stuff, I won't measure out my vegetables. I eat a bunch of vegetables. And right. then, you know, if I'm having tofu or tempeh, I'll have, you know, four or five ounces of it or whatever. Yeah, I, <laughs> I laugh because I, I'm the same way. Like I had to measure my food because if not, I would eat everything. Because I mean, I would just eat to <laughs> not get full and then easily put on like 20, 50 pounds, which for a lot of guys, that would be like an awesome thing. But if you were a performance athlete, you had to kind of measure those things in a while. So, but yeah, yeah so I'll, sure I'll, I want to stay lean and stuff. <laughs> so I, yeah, man, I get it. Cause I, you know, like, or if I have, I love cereal more than anything and I like, right. you know, and I don't eat a ton of cereal, but I do. I'll eat the whole damn box. Yeah. Man, it's so good. <laughs> Especially as you lock at, uh, at home now and then you can't, you can't go anywhere. So, man. so, so have you been sure. able to, how, how are you doing with your, with your gym now? Is this open? How's that? What's the status? You know, now? it's not open yet. We've been really struggling. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a long story, but okay. yeah, I mean, I was teaching classes three, four times a week. And then with all this happened, you know, we're obviously closed. So, right. you know, I'm not sure what our next step is. So okay, I'll have to keep you posted. Cool, cool, cool. And um, what are some tips that you can give the folks out there that um, they're not as high-performing athletes, but they want to stay lean? Um, 
So what are some tips to stay lean? And then also some tips for the ones that want to gain weight. So you sure. male or female, yeah, you, some quick tips that you can give them. Yeah, absolutely. So as a beginner, you know, I always tell clients or friends or whatever, if you're just starting, mm-hmm. go for a walk. Any mm. type of movement is good. You know, I mean, going for a walk is a hell of a lot better than sitting on the couch. <laughs> you know, you start walking 10 minutes a day and then right. the next week, 15 minutes is starting somewhere and I don't care what people like to do if you like to Zumba if you like to hike if you like to bike if you like to swim any any type of movement like I said is awesome um is just getting going getting off the couch um and as far as somebody that wants to gain muscle is a little bit more advanced Mm. you know it it's all about consistency Mm. you know with training uh, you know, I've been training for over 20 years and it's taken me a long time to look the way I do, but you got to put in the work, you know, if you want to get bigger, you got to eat big and you got to, you got to train, you mm-hmm. got to, you know, train every single day. You have to be consistent with your eating, eating enough calories, you know, getting enough nutrition, getting enough rest. All those things are very important, um, you know, in growing yeah. in whatever direction, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it happened one day, and especially from a natural bodybuilding standpoint, from a natural athlete. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, a, it's a lifetime of work. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, you've done this a long time, and it, it's yeah. so hard yeah. to to build muscle. It's so hard to lose weight. Whatever you're trying right. to accomplish, it is freaking hard. Yeah. But I tell people, you know, you can't get discouraged. You know, right. you're you're not going to hit your goal in yeah. three weeks, a month, two months. So you just have to keep going. Have to be consistent with it. True. 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 Yeah, I agree. But so what do you think is, is more important to it, to talk about veganism or to live, or to, to carry your life uh, as, a, as a vegan? What do you think is more important? You know, leading by example, I think yeah. is, is uh, most important. Um, I mean, how I look at it is my body is my business card. It is my... Um, um, it, it's everything, you know, I, I want to represent this lifestyle the best of my ability. You mm-hmm. know, when pe- I want people to think of vegans as strong, fit and healthy and muscular yeah. instead of the stereotype of the hippie, the skinny, the sick, the weekly. Right. I, I want those to go away. I want people to look at me and be like, hey, I want to look like her. I want to be right. strong like her. I want to be fit like her. So it's very important to me that I look a certain way because I am representing this lifestyle. This is who I am. You know, everywhere I go, I wear a vegan shirt or animal rights shirt. And, you know, people aren't going to take you seriously if you are a little skinny, twerpy, or if you're extremely overweight. And I hate to be an asshole, but it's true. You know, you have to, you have to be better than average for people to actually take you seriously. You like we, all these events that we go to, you know, they're guys that come to the booth are big muscular you know big bodybuilders and they're gonna look at a skinny vegan like oh, excuse oh, me right no you you have to represent the lifestyle and i take it very seriously yeah yeah it's, it's absolutely like i think this is and i know a lot of it's just a lot of people have um different opinions about this vegan the simple fact that they'll say that well i'm not in the i'm not a vegan because of my body or, or it's, it's too shallow or anything like that but at the same time, I think the activism had to be done in so many ways, right? And by you showcasing yourself and presenting yourself in a certain way, right, allows the M's to, to, to change their mind. The thing, the thing is, like, a lot, we see veganism from, a, from an animal right standpoint. But from an outsider, they see it as a diet standpoint, right? Right. So, right. so if your if your body doesn't symbolizes the attraction is that they need to see to be able to be convinced, then it's not probably it's gonna trigger anything in their emotion. So that's absolutely, why, it's very true. How many people do you know that'll say, "Oh, I started vegan for the health, but then I changed to the animal when I figured find that out." That's that's pretty yeah. common. It's very common. Yeah, I hear yeah. that all the time. So do I. So do I. I yeah. hear that a lot. So I'm thinking, wait a minute. So we into something out here, you know, I'm sure yep. I'm not saying that everybody that follows you is a vegan, but the majority, they, they probably have in their mind, like, look the way she look, like, look at the things she's right. doing. So they, something, something's happening there. So sure, I, I do, I do feel that that's, that's an important concept and it's important that people keep that in their mind that mm-hmm. you have to represent yourself uh, in a way uh, that allows them to, 
kind of trigger something in their brain. Oh, for sure. You know, and I have so many friends, so many clients, so many acquaintances yeah. that have gone vegan, you know, because they, you know, I, I've, I've helped them. They see, you know, all the accomplishes, accomplishments I have in athletics and stuff. And, you know, just leading by example and people will ask questions, you know, and, you know, I've seen it over and over again. And that's why I keep doing what I'm doing is to, you know, to help. You want people to think. Yeah. But Nissa, what would be your legacy? Do you, you ever thought about that? Oh, damn, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, to save animals, you know, that's, that is my mission right. in life is, is um, to save as many animals as possible through education, through athletics, through fitness, through the health industry, you know, and, you know, I'm not in this for anything else but that no. you know i i'm so passionate about it it's something that i will always do um uh, makes my life i mean everything that i do you know revolves around this yeah and like i said everywhere i go wear an animal rights shirt a vegan shirt whether it's to the gym or whatever and and just just helping people is is the biggest thing i just just want to save as many animals as i can as possible. yeah that's that's yeah. great that we we all want the same thing too and so Tell us a little bit about, about your rescue chihuahuas. Tell us about, about, about how many chihuahuas do you have? And why I chihuahuas? Do. I have four. You four have four? Chihuahuas. Wow. Yes. Four rescue chihuahuas. I've got uh, three girls and a boy. Nice. nice. Yeah, nice. and I rescued my first, and then I got a second, and then my, I have a, a lady that uh, she um, uh, volunteers for chihuahua and small dog rescue. So she yeah. called me. She's like, Vanessa, I've got a third. <laughs> Yes, of course. And then she calls me again and she's like, oh my gosh, I have this one. He needs a home. He was, he was starved to death. He was in a cage. And I'm like, I'll take him. <laughs> so, and I told her, I said, Gina, no more. I, said, no I can't more. take any more. I'm going to become the crazy chihuahua lady. <laughs> it's so true. You know, people are like, how many do you have? But they're, you know what? I love them so much. They're my entire world. They're my children you know, and I want to give them the best life I can. And, and um, they're, they're rotten, spoiled. It's absolutely ridiculous how <laughs> spoiled they are. And they deserve it because they, they, the three out of the four have come from really horrible situations, were abused, um, kicked. Mm -hmm. One came from a puppy mill and um, it's just heartbreaking, you know, and I just wish more people would, would rescue instead mm -hmm. of buying, you know, from, from pet stores and, you know, breeders and stuff. I'm really passionate about that. And, um, it's so important because so, so many animals, I mean, I, I want to say the numbers like 17,000 a month uh, of chihuahuas that are euthanized because they're just, they're so overpopulated, you know, people oh, keep wow. breeding for the money and it just makes me sick. So I'm very, very passionate about rescuing. If someone wants to help, um, how can they, how can they get started on like either rescue or donating or they want to actually take some of them with them home? How can they do that? Yeah, if, you know what? Fostering is the best thing is okay. because there's so many animals right now in shelters that are in a cage. And if one person opens up their home to, to, you know, have a dog or cat live with them for a while until they're adopted out. You know, and it's a big issue going on right now with people. People are getting rid of their animals left and right because they can't afford them, mm. which I don't understand, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and they're ended up in shelters and, you know, they need these animals need need foster. Yeah. You, you know, now that you mentioned that, I, I have a friend that um, she's from Panama. And she has a animal rescue um, organization. It's called... Oh, cool. it's called uh, Angeles de los Animales, so like animals, angels, and she she told me that now with COVID nineteen, the whole mission is to uh, receive donations to give to family that are having problems feeding their pets or their animals. Wow. Right? I don't like sure. to pets, cool. but uh, yeah, to to feed their animal. So they they're doing the donations either by giving them food for the for the animals. Cool or monetary donations. And I thought that was an amazing, uh, an amazing thing. Uh, That's cause, wonderful. Because a lot of people are, are jobless or they, they, they sure. have not been able to do much. And so the first thing they do is they'll take the money uh, and feed their family and they don't put their pets on the same level, even though right. they are, they're, even though they are important uh, they're members of their family, but they'll, they'll sacrifice them instead of, instead of their, their own kids. 
So, right. uh, so they're trying to do that a lot. So I think that's, that's a really nice, nice thing. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I hope people have a lot, take a lot more consciousness on that. I'm, I'll, I'll put in the description some references, some places that people can go, but it's going to vary depending on their location, right? Um, yeah, if, that's if, wonderful. Yeah, in Colorado, where where can they where can they go? Who can they call? You know, gosh, that's a great question. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, I, you know, because I I've only been back about a year, uh, okay. and there's I know there's a lot of like we have uh, Denver Dump Friends League is really big okay. here. Um, I donate to them. I donate. Um, there's a couple animal sanctuaries here that I donate to. Okay. Um, Loving Arms is one. Uh, Rescued Friends, and oh uh, gosh. Goat sanctuaries. It's a it's a sanctuary for goats. Um, yeah, there's a ton that I that I um, you know give money to for sure. And there's just so many. You know, I yeah. just I people find one that you really you know care about, and I mean any any amount of money helps. Okay. Hey, so um, tell us a little bit about who are some of your uh, some of the companies that you work with, uh, and and who are some of your your sponsors? Did you want to call it that way? Yeah, so I work with uh, True Supplements. Okay. Um, it's Mossy Arias's company. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an all vegan um, supplement line. They've right. got protein, uh, BCAAs, creatine, multivitamin. Um, all vegan. Uh, Pre workout. Just, yeah, all vegan, everything. And the stuff is awesome. It's all tested for heavy metals, it's very clean, uh, no fillers and no you know additives and stuff in it. Um, I love it. <clears throat> I use them myself. I do a protein shake a day. I'd use their pre-workout quite a bit. Nice. Um, the hydrate, it's like an electrolyte drink that I, I, I do. And then I do their BCAs every day nice. um, during my workout. So, yeah, I work closely with them and, um, you know, promote that product because it's something I truly believe in. Right. Because um, there's so many bad supplement companies out there. You know, you're just buying garbage. And, you know, most of these companies are not vegan. There's a lot of you know, weird stuff in, in products that people don't know and don't research. So right. I'm very careful what I put in my body as far as supplementation. Okay. And you have like a discount code that we can, we can give our, yeah. 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 Is it's PBM plant-based muscle. Yeah. Okay. For people, if you're interested in a, you know, pre-workout, a BCA, a, a vegan protein powder, you know, like I said, the list goes on, but PBM plant-based muscle is my discount code. Yeah. Okay. And Vanessa, tell me, uh, how does the initiative of writing a book came, came out? I mean, I'm, we're kind of curious to know how, how that happened. What was the story behind that? Yeah, it's kind of a crazy story. <laughs> um, I've actually been a, a huge fan of Robert Cheek forever. Right. Um, I uh, discovered him and gosh, I was a freshman in college and I was vegan at the time. Yeah. And uh there was no other vegan athletes, vegan bodybuilders. And so I right. was like, Oh my gosh. And I just followed his career, read his books. And years later, random, I met him. I saw him at my, my local gym and I went up to him. I'm like, Hey, are you Robert cheek? And you know, <laughs> like, the a, like a sister, fangirl, like a fangirl. Yeah, right? whole fangirl. I'm like, oh <laughs> what, what the? And it was weird. It was like a Saturday at like two o'clock. It was a ra- totally random time. And I saw him walk down the steps and I recognized him right away. And I was with a buddy of mine. I'm like, yo, do you know who that is? He's like, no, I don't. I'm like, that's Robert Cheek. <laughs> he started veganbodybuilding.com. I've been following him forever. And so I kind of like watched him and stuff kind of creeped on him, you know. And then finally I went up to him and like introduced myself. And I'm like, hey, man, I've been following you, you know, my entire life basically. And, you know, thanked him. And um, and we, honestly, we just became best friends after that. And that was, gosh, I don't even know however many years ago. Yeah. And a couple of years later, he asked me to write a book with him. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's so do it. that's how it started. Nice. Nice. That was awesome. So yeah. where, where, where can people find um, the book and, and some of your other merch? Yeah. So our book is on Amazon right now. We're not personally okay. selling it. So Amazon is plant-based muscle, Robert Cheek and Vanessa Spinoza. And then my stuff, I, uh, I have a website. It's plantbasedmuscles.com. People can get my merchandise there, my hat, I have hoodies, t-shirts, tank tops. And I also sell programs. I do meal, meal plans, training plans. And I, I actually have a six-week quarantine uh, home workout for people that don't have a lot of equipment can follow a, a six-week workout. It's a great, it's tough, you know, it's minimal equipment. And it'll, it'll definitely kick your ass for, <laughs> for anybody that needs it. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And what's your, uh, what's your social media? Yeah, social media is plant-based muscle on Instagram. You can shoot me a DM there. 
you know, people have questions about whatever, hit me up on Plant Based <laughs> Muscle on Instagram. That's great. Hey, Vanessa, do you have any initiative to put any, any products in Spanish by any chance? You know, wow. Um, there needs to be for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. We can work on that. You know, I, gosh, that, that's something that is missing right now in the, yeah. in the vegan community is there's a lack of um, information mm -hmm. from books to podcasts to everything in any other language except for English. So True. I need to, that's something that um, you and I, we need to talk about, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, yeah. doing stuff because we, we need it. We need to, it's, yeah. it, 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 there's, there's nothing out there for, you know, anything. So. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, we could talk all day, but I just want to say you, thank you. I uh, appreciate the time. I, I know. Absolutely. Roger, thank you. Idea. No, 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 it's no, no, no Vicky. You know, I thought about you as soon as I said, you know, what? I need to initiate this, this process and I need to call Vanessa because we need to have to link. And you always been supportive of a lot of the things that I've done. And uh, same thing, I want to be supportive of that, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. I want to always be supportive. So um, I want to say thank you. And we appreciate everything you're doing, Absolutely. not only for the animal, but for people also and from the earth. And for myself, as a friend also, I want to give you thanks. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I of course, preferred, anytime. I would have preferred to do it in person. Well, being yeah. the circumstances, we're doing it yeah. this way. <laughs> so we had to do a part two, and then we can hopefully do it and uh, maybe showcase some of, uh, some of your boxing skills to some of the people out there. Yeah, well, yeah, you'll have to come out to the gym, and you're welcome anytime in Colorado. So Absolutely. All right, Vanessa, so I'll talk to you later, okay? All right, Roger. Somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Gracias por escuchar Latino Bye. Vegano. Un show donde se habla todo lo relacionado sobre el veganismo entre la comunidad latina. No olviden suscribirse a este podcast, seguirnos en Instagram, Facebook, YouTube y a visitarnos en latinoyvegano.com. Latinoyvegano.com.